Welcome to Module 5, our final module in this short course on CW Anchor Words. A few notes before we get started. You've noticed the lack of written text in this course. That's by design. Morse code is a system representing the alphabet of specific sounds, and that is how you should go about mastering it. CW, on the other hand, besides referring to a mode of operations, is a language with grammar, spelling, and its own syntax and rules. These anchor words we've been studying represent a small part of the language, but committing their sounds and meanings to your memory makes learning the whole of CW much more natural. As I've said many times, continued growth in your fluency depends on repetition, so get on the air and use these anchor words in your conversations. You've heard me say no dictations throughout this course. You should not take dictations, but taking notes is often a good idea. Jot down details, call signs, and names after you've copied them in your head. There are a number of courses that build fluency in the language of CW. CW Ops offers a series, starting with a basic course for people who want to learn Morse code and have no previous experience, all the way up to an advanced course that's designed to help increase uh, speeds to 25 words per minute and beyond. I urge you to check out our website, www.cwops.org. Today we're going to study prosigns, which I've alluded to several times in previous modules. Prosigns are composed of two characters sent very quickly, quickly enough that each should sound like a single independent character. They have very specific meanings and usages. Let's begin. BT, which is formed by B and T. Uh, this re represents, for all practical purposes, a period. It's easier to send than uh, punctuation. It really means the same thing in conversational CW. Of course, you should not use this in the numerical sense to replace a decimal point, because it's not. SK, formed by S and K. SK is sent at the end of a QSO, indicating to the other station that you will not be sending any further information except perhaps to acknowledge their final farewell. Uh, the usage is as follows. Uh, note that SK is not necessarily sent at the end of the QSO. In this case, the operator still sends K end, indicating that he or she is still sending the conversation back for final comments. AR, formed from A and R. This is a particle that sounds formal and musical, but sadly is somewhat redundant. It, it indicates the end of the exchange, but since K and KN already means the same thing, using AR should be considered unnecessary, but fun. It's like a musical accent. AS, combining A and S. This means, hold on, I'll be right back. It doesn't require any response, just patience. The other operator has temporarily left, uh, temporarily left the operating position to handle the situation. Your job is to wait for their return. BK, which is formed by B and K. BK as a break is sent to the other station when you need clarification about some information. BK is used with unique grammar that's beyond the scope of this course. Though it's technically a pro sign, most operators actually send this as separate characters. You'll hear it both ways. We're going to jump right into the fast speed workout since these pro signs are usually sent pretty fast anyway. So um, without uh, any further interruption, I'm going to dim my screen and here we go.
And that was the last workout of the course. We'll be putting everything together in the last CUSA workout. I will see you there.